No, we still got 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I'll go ahead and get started. I won't make you wait that last agonizing 30 seconds. Um, first of all, thanks for everybody coming. This is the last session on the last day, and if you all are nearly as tired as I am, I appreciate you actually walking into yet another session room. <laughs> um, and I love that there's this huge room for the last session of the last day. Um, but anyway, thanks for coming. Um, I'm Addison Berry. I work for Lullabot. Uh, I've worked for them for about five and a half years. And uh, we started out as a training and uh, consulting company. And now we're really focused on strategy design and development. But we still have our training stuff. Uh, which is mostly focused now on our site Drupalize Me, um, which is our video training stuff. So we do more online training than we do in-person training now. And uh, I'm now technically the director of education at Lullabot, um, but most of that means working with this. <clears throat> and we'll talk a little bit more about my history of how I got to where I am uh, in, in the slides. So this session, is basically about uh, free educational material resources uh, for the Drupal community. This is not about, I'm not gonna talk about the uh, money-making side or, or that kind of thing. Like that's not what the focus of this is. This is what is our community as an open source community? How are we trying to provide and grow our community and educate our community um, on the free side of things? Not that money's not involved, but we'll get to that. <clears throat> um, I also want to say, before I dive into this, that this is very much just sort of my personal experiences and personal take. I'm sure that I have lots of gaps in, in the presentation that I'm going to be doing. Um, I've already learned about lots of things here I didn't know about. That's a great thing about going to a con and you're like, what? Who's doing the what, what? Great. Um, so there probably are gonna be lots of gaps and I would like this to be the start of a conversation um, and not just like some kind of information that's sort of being thrown out at people as some canonical thing. Um, so in terms of that sphere and what I'm talking about here, I'll give you a little background on how I got to where I am. I started out in the Drupal community, um, didn't know how to code, didn't know anything was going on and had to teach myself. And uh, I did a lot of headbanging. Uh, started to kind of get involved with the community a little bit, was helping a little bit with documentation. Um, and then Josh Koning started this thing called the Drupal Dojo about five and a half years ago. And it was pretty revolutionary um, because basically he was like, I know Drupal stuff. I know there are lots of people who need to know Drupal stuff. So once a week, I'm going to get online and I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to talk about how to do something in Drupal for an hour and share it with whoever wants to come and help. And it was pretty awesome. And the group, he created a group on groups.drupal.org for this, and it exploded. Like hundreds and hundreds of people were signing up, and he was completely overwhelmed. <laughs> um, and, uh, but it was, it was great. Like, there's, like suddenly there's this community of people who wanted to learn, uh, and people who were doing lessons, but I have to say, really, it was a person doing lessons. And there were, you know, Josh was always like, I need other people to help me do this. Help, help. Um, and so there were some other things that came up, and for me personally, um, it was great because that was, it gave me a place to sort of suddenly engage. Like there was a lesson I could go to, there was a chat channel where all the students would get together and chat and, and with the instructor, and we would all just talk about whatever the topic was for that lesson for the day. Um, and it felt like a safe place for me to enter being stupid with Drupal. Like it was just sort of an environment where you could be stupid and you were around other people who were okay with being stupid. Um, and that was a huge barrier for me, entering into this world of like geniuses who were making open source software, right? Um, so, so that was like a really big moment for me. And then um, I got deeply involved in the community after that. I tried to, Josh got busy and there weren't enough teachers who were stepping up to teach. I did some teaching and tried to continue the dojo. But basically, after a while, there weren't enough people willing to, to teach and lead and put other structures in place. And so the dojo just sort of drifted. And I basically, at that point, felt like my energies were better spent elsewhere. So then I moved on to the more manageable uh, task of becoming the documentation team lead for the project. 
for those of you in the recording who don't get the sarcasm. <laughs> um, um, but I did, I took on the doc lead role and, and uh, I also got a grant from uh, the Knight Foundation to improve uh, Drupal's documentation. Um, that largely meant me writing some documentation about how to contribute and traveling all over the world um, to talk to people about how to contribute to documentation. And I did that for about a year and a half, two years, I guess, I was doc lead, and then I handed that off about two years ago. Um, and I was pretty worn out at the end of that. And I, um, I, I basically stepped back from the community for a while, for about a year and a half. I, I largely removed myself from the community. I focused on uh, work, and I focused on going outside, um, spending time with friends who didn't know anything about Drupal. It was kind of an amazing period of my life. Um, and then in, uh, at, at Denver, DrupalCon Denver in March of this year, Ryan Hirsch did a presentation about the Drupal Ladder, which is an initiative specifically focused on getting people to be able to contribute to core, to Drupal core development. And, uh, and it's a very systematic thing. We create lessons, you progress through the lessons in a very distinct order to get you to where you need to go. And I got really excited for the first time in a long time um, about the community education stuff because it felt so focused and I felt like this is something, not to sound catty or anything, but it sounded like it ha really had a, a chance of success. Um, I've been through a lot of disappointments in the community and, and this seemed focused enough to, to maybe get somewhere. So I got excited about this again. And in the midst of all of that, and I was like, okay, there's ladder stuff and there's all these cool things that are going on. And of course, I work in Drupal education. I was just sort of doing my thing in my corner. It's like, I need to find out what's happening out there. I need to see what's going on right now with Drupal education and how can I jump into those things and how can I relate that to the excitement I have with Drupal ladder. And that's why this presentation exists because <laughs> I went to go try and find that stuff, and I was like, what is going on? Like, I couldn't figure out where stuff was. I didn't understand what was happening, which things were really happening. Is any of this actually anybody doing anything? I couldn't, there was no, I had no idea where, how to even start. And I was really confused and frustrated. So as I started to pull that stuff together, I thought I would share this information. So that's sort of my history. I know it was a bit long-winded, but I wanted to give a little perspective in terms of where this list is coming from in my flavor on it, because you may and probably will disagree with, with some of it or have other gaps that I don't even know about that you can fill. And I want, like that, I expect that. That's, that's where we're coming from here. Um, so when I went through, I sort of was trying to compile a list of like all the different stuff that had sort of been going on. And I know, and like I said, I'm sure that there's stuff that's not on this list, but these are sort of the main ones that I was looking at and trying to, to see what was going on there. And then I sort of tried to start, it was a little bit of research to even figure out sort of what's the sort of the status of some of these. So, so some of these I've grayed out quite a lot because they pretty much, as far as I can discern, are inactive. Um, and then there are others that are pseudo grayed out, the dojo and the open curriculum skill set stuff because there's still sort of stuff happening but it's certainly not anything resembling full stream um, and, and, and a lot of activity. But I'm gonna walk through what these are um, real quickly here. So Drupal.org documentation, handbooks on Drupal.org. It's there, it exists, there's teams still working on it, and, and that's sort of the, the, that's the core of our Drupal community education. That's where people go and have gone for a long time. Dojo, so the dojo started five and a half years ago. The dojo still exists. Um, it's really sporadic. Um, there is a group and they talk to each other. Um, but in terms of actual lessons going up, I don't think any lessons have actually gone up since the beginning of the year or something like that. And it kind of comes and goes in spurts. You get quiet for a while, then people do a bunch of lessons and it gets quiet, kind of a thing. They had a spin-off, uh, well actually there's sort of two spin-offs from that, the Kata and the Doli, or the Drupal Open Learning Initiative, which were efforts sort of around making project-based learning experiences, right? So we're gonna build XYZ site and a bunch of students will build the site and we'll have project management and all of these things. And as far as I could tell, they're just certainly the resources never really coalesced to make that actually really happen. And uh, as far as I can tell, those are not active projects at all. Open curriculum is in the uh, curriculum and training group on groups.drupal.org. 
And uh, it, it is a larger discussion about like creating um, a curriculum that's an open source, generally available curriculum that anybody who wants to teach Drupal can use. Um, and specifically, there's sort of a subset, the first sort of, I guess, major step in getting that going was coming up with these skill sets, like defining what is it that people are going, what's the, what are the goals and how do we break things down, sort of a vocabulary, as it were, for training materials and assessments and all of these things. Um, and so that got really far and there's actually quite a lot of stuff um, that, that is on the group with that and there's like a nice huge colored flow chart <laughs> that it has all of this stuff. Um, but now it's just kind of hanging out and nobody's really actually doing stuff with it but there's a lot of work that went into that and it's sitting there waiting to be used. Um, Drupal Guilds was the idea of actually creating like a guild in Drupal where there would be mentors and you would sort of like journeyman into a role um, and work your way through guild levels. Um, and it would be sort of like a personal recommendation um, building and, uh, and sort of a, not exactly certification. This is one of those things that was sort of like, not exactly certification, but you know, you're a guild member. This person's been in the guild for so long and they've walked through these steps and these people vouch for their work kind of a thing. And that's no longer active. Um, Skill Compass is, Johan Falk launched this site this year, skillcompass.org, and uh, basically it's, it's a way to aggregate Drupal material from all over the web and categorize it according to um, what it is that you would be doing. And then you can put it into a tree that's like, okay, I wanna learn Drupal. I wanna learn Drupal theming. I wanna learn how to work with node templates or I wanna learn how to install a theme. And you can work your way through the the tree and then find the materials that are out on the web to, that relate to that particular thing you want to do. Drupal Ladder is the project that I'm involved with now that Brian Hirsch started. Again, that's building a series of lessons in a very specific one direction order, no branching and treeing kind of thing really, um, to take you from the bottom rung of I don't really know what's going on to being a contributor to Drupal Core. Um, and then, of course, we have just sort of Drupal camp trainings that are happening. Um, lots of camps. The con has training prior to it. Um, Bad camp has, is a free event and has free training days. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of education that's available from going to just local, regional um, events. Um, and then the DA has started this global training day. Does anybody, how many people here know what the global training day is or has heard of it before? Okay, so maybe a third. Um, the Drupal Association is trying to spread the word about Drupal and get people sort of bootstrapped into what it is. So they've started this initiative, uh, the Global Training Day, to get trainers all over the world to provide introductory Drupal training on the same day um, and then promote that. And it should be very low fee or free. Um, and I think the there was one, I believe, in June, which we took part in. Uh, there's another one coming up September, and then I think they have another one planned for December. So, and they, uh, they do provide the, uh, the Acquia Hello Drupal curriculum um, if you want to use that, or you can use your own curriculum and just take part in the, in the training day. So that's the stuff I came up with that I sort of am attached to or have some sense of what's going on with it. Um, there may be other stuff, and if people have other things, they're like, wait a second, there's also this awesome thing, you're stupid. Uh, you know, feel free to talk into the mic and, and tell me that, I'm cool with that. Um, but there's also, like, this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of different things going on, um, and over quite a period of time. So, I still was confused. <laughs> Um, even when I kind of got myself down to at least understanding that, I was sort of like, I, what is the goal? What is the purpose here? Like, ah, how do I help? Where, where do I go? And the thing is, is like, there's lots of different people who have different goals. Like we're, you know, community education. We want to educate the community. We want to help each other as teachers. It's really vague and fuzzy. And a lot of people have different understandings of what that means, and they have different specific goals within that arena. And so everybody's just sort of 
doing their own thing, which is not a bad thing. That's quite the open source way, right? Like, do lots of iterations and then the best one wins kind of a thing. It's just, we aren't really to the best one wins or the focused effort coming together part yet. Um, so there's a lot of stuff we've thrown out there and there's a lot of stuff that's just sitting stagnant. So I didn't really feel a lot better when I got, got to this stage of things. Um, I still thought that it was um, overwhelming. So when I'm stepping back to look at it, this is sort of, um, and I'm, I'm sorry for the, the geek plus plus minus minus, but um, our, <laughs> when I look at like our community and trying to do this and the, the problems that we may or may not have, like to me, like some of the greatest strengths that we have is that we do have a lot of really great ideas and we have a lot of people with, with really great expertise, like people who really know their shit. Um, in our community, it's massive, and we have a lot of people who actually know what's going on. And we have a huge community to try things out with, and people who are really excited and willing to learn. Um, you know, it's like in a lot of smaller communities, just trying to like prototype or figure out how to do something, when you have no one who can use it and give you feedback, it's really difficult. We have a massive community that we can try this stuff out on. We can experiment quite a lot. Um, but of course, we end up with our resources spread out a lot because everybody's sort of doing a different project with their own vision and their own goal or their own specific end in mind. And so the resources get spread out, which makes it really difficult for us to move any one forward in a meaningful way. Um, <clears throat> it's also super hard for someone coming from the outside to figure out how to help or get involved at all. It took me forever to make that list <laughs> of like going through groups.drupal.org and just Googling around the internet, like just tons of stuff that's out there and it's really hard to figure out. It took me a long time to figure out what, what was out there and then I was like, but is, wait, is this one even active? And I'm like looking at posts from two years ago and I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't get involved in this one because I don't think I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be talking to myself. It's, it's, so it's really, really hard to get people actually working together. I mean, when you want to work on Drupal core, you can go to core office hours, you can figure out, uh, you know, getting into the issue queue and you can just start working on things. It's surprisingly, because everybody says, oh my God, it's so confusing. But you know what? Working on code in Drupal is so clear compared to doing many other things in our community. So it's a, it's a big problem for us. Um, yeah, like if I want to help on the views module, it's relatively clear at least where to get started. Um, <clears throat> we need lots of things for success. This is just a bullet list I kind of just came up with, <laughs> just to give me some focus in terms of, of my thoughts. Um, and this is not specific to uh, education and the stuff I'm talking about. It's not specific to Drupal. Um, this is like open source. This is just this is the kind of stuff you have, in a, particularly in a volunteer environment, but being able to focus our effort, collaborating with other community projects, because education's not in a silo by itself. Like, we're not just making stuff up out of the air and then just training people. Like, we're related to lots of other things that are going on. I mean, the core mentoring hours and office hours and, and all of the stuff that's happening there, like, that is also education. When people are in the issue queue and they're getting their patches reviewed, that is education. So we're not in a silo and we need to also look at the, the bigger picture, I think. Um, sustainable resource models. This is just, again, a classic open source problem, right? We're volunteers. At the end of the day, I gotta make the money. So, um, and what ends up happening is you have a volunteer or two volunteers who get very excited about something. They get gung-ho, they work their asses off and they burn out, and they burn out hard. And then everything just goes pew when that one moving factor goes away. We need to find some way to keep regenerating that energy in new people, which is also related to turning the learners into contributors. Um, <clears throat> this was a huge, huge problem with the dojo. People would come, they would learn, and they would leave. And they didn't turn themselves into contributors who were teaching and helping sustain the dojo itself. And it, it just flatlined. Um, and this is, just, again, generally true of, of stuff in open source. It's really hard. But if you, if you can't, teaching is great and spreading the word. But if we can't become a self-sustaining thing, then it, 
we're not getting ourselves very far. Um, <clears throat> so, to address those, um, we had a boff earlier today, which was fascinating. Um, it was about training. We just got together, and everybody was doing training. And it, what was fascinating to me, and the reason I say fascinating, <laughs> is because cause you're like, hmm. <laughs> uh, but the reason I, I found it really fascinating is because it just was this classic, here are all these smart, passionate people who have a lot of awesome ideas and want to do something. And we're all like, wow, I didn't know you were doing that. Or, huh, that's, that's, you know, it's like communication. You know, like, again, this whole, like, the whole thing of, like, you can't find what projects are going on or how to get engaged with them. We don't even effectively communicate. Um, everybody who's trying to move in this direction, you know, unless we get to an event and you meet some people here and some people there, there is a group on groups.drupal.org. There are many groups on groups.drupal.org that have something to do with education. <laughs> But I would like to propose that we use the curriculum and training group as the main place to communicate. And you know, other um, education efforts or initiatives have their own group on groups.drupal.org. But there's nothing to say that we can't create, you know, on groups you can create subpages. There's nothing to say we can't create a page that says these are the active education initiatives that are going on in the Drupal community. Um, here is a two-sentence or three-sentence summary of what this initiative is about, what the goals are, and what it's trying to serve. Um, and here is how you can get involved with that. Like, I mean, I'm talking just super simple here. I'm not trying to get like into big vision. Like, can we just, you know, sort of start to coordinate what it is that people are actively working on? So if you're working on something, you have a project or an initiative, Let's start to bring that information together so when someone comes in that's new and they want to find out, we're like, here, this is our current state of things. Um, we can get into all kinds of conversations about maintaining the page and then stuff gets old. And, but, but can we just... Microphone, please. <laughs> I just want to say I love you. <laughs> I really do. I'm just like, oh my God. Um, but that list that you talked about, that inventory, does exist, so I'm going to put that at the top of the group so you can find it. Awesome. Thank you. That would be lovely. <clears throat> so, but anyway, but I, you know, and that's like a very simple thing, but I do think, and I haven't done this yet because I've been just mulling on these things, honestly, um, but I would sort of like to propose, like, with the curriculum and training group that we think about how we could reorganize that group to be a landing place for lots of stuff's going on. I mean, we, you can do stuff to organize groups um, in terms of how it presents the information and breaks things down. And, and I think it would be good for us to, uh, to brainstorm on that. Originally, when I did this, came up with this presentation, I wanted to do a boff after the presentation um, to talk about these things, but this is the last session. So, <laughs> no boff. Um, but there's the sprint tomorrow. Um, and so folks do, if are around for the sprint and want to meet on this stuff and just you know, the thing is, we can change how this landing page looks like, and then we can change it again. Like, it's not like, we don't have to have a committee that meets for two hours to decide what should be on that page and which tabs we should have. Okay, we, should, we can just do something. If it's not serving our needs, change it. So, it would be great to, tomorrow to actually just start to put some changes on there and see what we can come up with. So that's, <clears throat> that to me is like one of the simplest things, just as a starting place. Um, the first two bullet points that I had on like focus and collaboration, um, I'm just sort of breaking this stuff down. These are sort of existing projects that I know about that are places that people could get involved if they want to, um, and, and sort of hmm, categories of stuff. <laughs> because people have different interests in getting involved with education, or they're in a different place, or they're, they're wanting to provide or, or contribute different things. So I've kind of broken it down a little bit. So curriculum, and by curriculum, um, I'm separating that out, and that's based on, uh, actually, on the, the open curriculum definitions. Um, and if you go to, uh, in the curriculum and training group, <coughs> there's a section called open curriculum. Um, and uh, there are links for things like definitions and all the work that's been done, and it's actually pretty cool stuff. Um, but what I mean by curriculum is, is the more overarching meta stuff, like defining what it is that, that people need to learn 
and being able to sort of categorize that stuff into a kind of a vocabulary that we can then assign to materials and the actual stuff. And by materials, I'm talking about actual syllabus or syllabi, um, uh, you know, and resources like books or videos or, you know, how people actually, I want to learn this thing defined in the curriculum as a thing to learn and like the general goal of what that thing is. The materials actually get you from point zero to that thing, which also includes assessment, which as we talked about in the BOF earlier today, our community is woefully like under represented with. We don't really have open source assessment tools. Um, and so I would consider all of that part of materials, like that actual feedback process of starting from zero and actually learning something. Um, <clears throat> so these, and for, so for those of the documentation team, I mean, again, Drupal.org documentation is a huge resource uh, in the community. And it's, it's a, uh, the on-ramping for that is sort of set and has, um, there's actually quite a bit of documentation on how to get involved and what all that means. Um, the Drupal Ladder is at drupalladder.org, um, and that, again, is creating lessons specific for a very specific goal of getting involved with CORE. So there are material, there are lessons, there are videos associated with the lessons, and it actually just walks people through steps. So if you want to teach people that stuff, you can go there, take the lesson, use it any way you want to. So it's just material that's available. And then Skill Compass, again, like I said, skillcompass.org is a way to aggregate uh, all kinds of materials from all over the web. So um, it was started by Johan earlier this year. So um, those are definitely things to check out and see in terms of like materials that are sort of already out there and being aggregated in some way. I'm sure there's tons and tons and tons of free materials. <laughs> These are just the three main ones that to me are, for me personally, are currently sort of active and viable. Um, so, um, and then, Teaching, like, curriculum is great, the, the materials and, and actually, you know, all the, the, the resources you need is great. And then there's just actually getting up and teaching people. <laughs> um, some people just want to teach. They don't want to build curriculum. How many people here like writing curriculum? See, and I knew that, <laughs> I knew there'd be a couple hands. Yeah. How many people really like teaching people? Yeah, it's a little, so, so, so sometimes you just want to teach people, right? And there are, like, um, you know, community ways of doing that. And so, like I said, there's the DA's Global Training Day. Um, and basically, if you go to drupal.org slash learn dash Drupal, um, there's sort of some information there about, like, the upcoming one and who's involved and where that's happening and stuff. Um, but if you want to provide training and be part of Global Training Day, you should start talking to the DA about that. Um, the Drupal Dojo, um, it's not terribly active right now, but it's set up so that basically you do an online lesson. Um, you pick your topic, you pick what you want to do, and what you want to talk about. You say, hey, Dojo people, I want to do this. They announce it, people come, they watch, it's recorded. So again, it's just a way for you to kind of put stuff out there and get feedback from people. Um, and then of course, just camps and meetups. Um, and not even like official training sessions, right? When you get up and do a, a session, you can talk about stuff. Um. <laughs> Don't forget about the users helping users stuff as a path for people to learn. Yes. In San Francisco, at least, that's like the biggest ongoing community resource for people. Yes, but how do they plug into it? Yeah, no, I know. They come to right. the meet up and then they go to the users helping users, which is separated from. Ah, okay. You guys actually separated They're into it. separated a, out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Which is similar to like your drop in. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, but yeah, I mean, like the actual like interaction at events thing, right, is, is huge. And, and just getting up and, uh, but that's the thing is like, you know, people think, oh, I'm going to go to a, an event and I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do a presentation and I'm going to just like talk to a bunch of people. Um, you share information that way. I wouldn't exactly call that training or education per se. I guess it depends. But, um, but there are other things you can do at meetups and camps. Um, and actually, our, our meetup panel we had yesterday, there were lots of ideas about different ways to run meetups. And some of them were really cool ways of getting people engaged and learning stuff together. Um, but go to events. Talk to people. 
if that's what you want to do, you should be going to events and actually talking to people. Um, so, but I guess like, so I have these like sort of as resources where to get in and like I would really like for, and like particularly, you know, like here we have materials and like I said, I'm sure there's other stuff that's tons of materials that are out there um, somewhere. And we talked about this a bit at the BOF. It's like, how do we find that stuff, put it together, you know? Um, I don't have answers <laughs> for any of this, but it would be great if we could get some sort of focus for like, you know, here's, here's a general curriculum and, and the Open Curriculum Project is working on that. Materials, how do we gather materials in some meaningful way for people who want to do training or who just want to teach themselves and dive into things? Um, and then, you know, and again with like teaching, like, I don't know, is there a way that like there's dojo stuff that can interact with Global Training Day? I don't know. Is there a way that, that dojo and camps and meetups or the training day, like all of these things where people are trying to put on events where we actually do training, is there a way for those to work together better? I don't know, but I think it's a question worth asking. You know, uh, we've all got limited time and we're all trying to have, you know, the, the biggest impact that we can. So, anyway, those are things I think we should try to sort of, and again, this is my breakdown into those three categories. I'm sure there are other things out there that people are interested in or other ways you would break this down. This is just my first shot across the bow, as it were. Um, the last two bullet points on there was sustainable resources and, you know, like turning uh, learners into contributors and stuff, which is part of the resource problem. And so resources. Resources are a problem. Volunteer work is hard. It's hard, you know? I mean, it, you love it, but like at the end of the day, you got to pay the mortgage. So, um, <clears throat> and there are two things, and actually I was talking with, with Mikkel earlier this week about um, he was teaching 300 students himself, and he came up with a, a process for them to basically be peer teaching. And, uh, and that, you know, that is a great thing, and like that's the kind of thing, like if you want to, if we want to make other projects sustainable, I think that's the thing is to not like force, force people into a system that sort of makes them take both sides of the coin in order to progress in some way is a way that we might be able to do something like that. Um, I think that this, if you go, so phpfordevelopers.com, this is a course um, being offered by Emma and Lorna. And I th A, it's a, it's a course we need in the Drupal community right now. Um, because it's about um, PHP's OO and Symphony 2 in Drupal 8, and a lot of people don't know that stuff. So um, it's, it's course material that we're going to need as a community moving forward. What I find fascinating about this is the funding model on this, because they're not offering this just as a course and you pay for a seat and you attend the course and you get your knowledge and you go home. The way that they're funding this is per company, and so it's got a higher rate per seat, as it were. Um, but if they get a certain amount of funding for going to the class, you get to go to the class and you get the materials from that, plus they're going to open source the entire curriculum so that everybody else can use it. And to me, that's a really interesting model for how we can fund educational materials. Right? I mean, they're going to spend, anybody, who has prepared curriculum knows how long that takes. And time is money. It's expensive as hell to come up with curriculum. And that's one of the biggest problems. Like once you spend all that time doing all that, spending all that money, it's really difficult to turn around and give that away for free and then have to do it all over again. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I think this is just a really interesting, I wanted to just put it up here because I think it's a really interesting model. I've not seen it before for educational materials. Like, we do this, right? We do this kind of thing all the time for code, right? We pay, we get this certain amount of money, we'll do this code, and then, it, you know, it's open source because Drupal's open source, so we open source our code all the time. Um, and there's all kinds of companies funding that. We don't do it with educational stuff. Maybe we could. So, something definitely worth looking at, I think. Um, it's really interesting. But, you know, yeah, some kind of way to, um, get stuff paid for so that people can really pour their time and energy into it and show that, because it's worth quite a lot. And the thing is, a lot of people expect to get that stuff for free for some reason. Um, and then also creating 
models in terms of how we are engaging with people who want to learn to turn them into actual contributors in the system itself. Just ideas, thoughts, radiating out of my brain. <laughs> um, so, um, I'm gonna, I wanted to definitely leave time for sort of conversation, because we were sort of definitely having a lot of conversations in our boff, so I wanted to, to leave some time. Um, so, my conclusion here um, is, yeah. <laughs> like, this is what I've come up with so far. What do we do next? Does this matter enough to people? Is this something that we are ready to come together with and figure out, or are we still gonna keep, uh, still in a place to keep iterating? You know, this is like the thing, right, with, with um, working on code. Okay, we'll try this, we'll try this. Like, contrib is the great land of, try it out. We'll have five different varieties, and then we'll see which one's best, and then that will become sort of the canonical thing that the community uses. Um, is, is our education still in that stage? Are we ready to coalesce and focus? I don't know. Um, I think I feel like I want it to be. I would love to see like some focus and direction happening and stuff like that. We also, though, we don't have a benevolent dictator um, leading the education product project. You know, there's no um, there's no buck stops here. There's no you know people that you um, automatically go to to say, okay, well, they're just going to say, this is, this is it. Cut it off. We're going to stop arguing and talking about this. We're making a decision. That doesn't tend to happen. Heather, go. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I already spoke, but I just wanted to say one, <laughs> make one clarification. And, um, and the, you said the skill sets, for example, that we're sitting there and we're not really doing anything with, thing with them, but they're actually completed. We can actually mm -hmm. accept that that piece of work is done. And so the things that, uh, for example, the skill compass is built off of that. And I'm also developing a 10-week uh, course that can be taught at college level with someone who uh, doesn't even know Drupal. And that's built off this skill sets as well. And that's going to be done in similar, kind of a similar fashion perhaps that the P2P developers is that it's going to be free. But um, so that's that. And the thing I actually really want to ask you about, because I have a feeling we could end up talking about all of our brilliant ideas <laughs> and just chewing it all up again. I just mm -hmm. feel like I don't want to go there, but I want to keep on building. I think what you've done with the, with the Drupal ladder is just fantastic, and your leadership abilities are just stellar. Um, what, can you just talk again a bit more about your, like, the disappointments, and why do you think Drupal ladder is working? What's making that work? Um, I'll leave it there. Yeah, that's a really great question. And it is interesting to me because I, you know, I get, I'm like, let's get people riled up. And I'm like, I'm not sure if I want people riled up because I don't know if I have the energy. Because I've definitely had disappointments and, um, and I'm very cautious um, with my community engagement now. And the reason that I feel positive about the Drupal ladder um, mostly has to do with its very narrow focus very clearly defined targets, goals. There are metrics for measuring progress to that goal. Um, and there was a lot of work done already when it was presented as an idea. So it was more like getting in and helping continue. You know, it's sort of like that writing the first draft is always hard, but then getting people to edit and expand is easier. And so there was something in place to jump into rather than, let's create this now. Somebody had already done all that hard work, creating the original concept. Um, and so to me, in terms of what I could give to it, I felt like that I can get behind. And I feel like, you know, between Denver and Munich, we met our goals. And that feels really great. And I feel like, okay, we can set more goals and go for those. And I feel like in a lot of the other projects I've been involved in, there's, it, there's just not stuff that's that concrete. The goals are so big and so far in the future and so massive that there's no, and there's no really breaking it down into smaller pieces that feel achievable within three months or two months or something. That, like they're, they're always set up so, okay, we'll do this and then we'll do that and we'll do this and then, you know, in like in a year or two, ta-da. But that intermediate step isn't necessarily, like it's you, you, you get there, but it's not in and of itself meaningful and useful per se. It's a step on the way to something. Um, 
That's assuming you even have that, which in most projects I've been involved with don't have that at all. Um, so that to me is, I think, probably the biggest thing. Um, is, is that it's, and it's really narrowly focused. Like, a lot of people have asked about Drupal Ladder being used for contrib and for lots of other things, and that's awesome, and ultimately, yes. And anybody who wants to do that can do that right now. That's, what not, that's not what the center, central focus of the project is, and I am not going to put my energy into anything beyond Drupal Core, because I need it for my sanity. I'm here. We also just started a steering committee um, because Brian started this thing, and then Brian's been like, oh my god, millions of people. <laughs> um, so Brock, Karen, and I are now like part of his steering committee, and we're looking for other people to get involved. Um, and he asked me this at Capital Camp, which was like a month ago, if I would be willing to do this. And I was like, yeah, I don't like to sign on the dotted line anymore in the community, because I, I, felt, I felt, particularly with the doc team lead stuff, um, I really felt like, I mean, I felt bad. I felt like I let people down, you know, because it was like I, I, I had all these ideas and I was trying to work towards them and I just couldn't do it anymore and I had to stop. And that was horrible. Like, that was just heart-wrenching. And I, I, I don't want to go through that again. And so I told him, I, I finally did accept, but I told him, here are the limits. Two hours a week, I only work on lessons and how those lessons, the content for the lessons gets created I don't deal with the website, I don't deal with the tools for creating the lessons, none of it. This is what I do, and these are the hours I do it in. And, and again, so I feel safe. <laughs> I'm like, here's my scope, this is what I'm willing to do. And he was excited about that, and he's actually getting the other steering committee people to do that. And I think that that's also probably really important in terms of being able to move a larger project forward. Um, and yeah, not burning people out. But, I have not spoken with Lisa Rex about this at all, no. I've met a thing about getting, how do you project manage in the community? If you look on the Getting Involved page, there's like a Getting Involved page for the Getting Involved page. Microphone. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> 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 Sorry. this whole thing. I know. I don't. I hope no one feels it's like just this conversation. But uh, just so people know, there's actually if you go to the Getting Involved page, there's a list of community initiatives, and that includes, of course, the core initiatives, but other initiatives like organizing the Getting Involved page. And Lisa Rex has actually done a lot of work to try and work this together, but there's a lot of knowledge that's sort of stuck in different places. I think even Addison wasn't aware. But it'd be great to have that kind of share what actually worked in terms of project management within the community. Mm -hmm. And you know, probably you could write a book about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great, actually. Yeah, because that is a, another larger meta problem. Yeah, um, I have to run, so I want to. Okay. Um, um, sort of tying together um, a little bit of, you know, where are we and what can we do at this point with the analogy to, you know, are, are we at the contrib part where people are still kind of doing stuff? One of the things with contrib is that there is this established uh, place and stuff where contribs happen and people can find them. So I think perhaps what we kind of, you know, what we would perhaps be a good thing to do as you alluded to a little bit earlier, is for all of us to kind of say, okay, we are going to go and we're going to start, in addition to making that list of, of what's available you know, at, at tr uh, curriculum and training, let's also just say, we're going to go and we're going to discuss these things and we're going to work with each other to figure out what's, you know, because let's keep talking but not wait until cons to do the talking. So that's the and trick. that, you know, <laughs> since that's the one place that we seem to have that makes sense, let's at least start <laughs> there, and then let's see where it goes. You know, just start talking. Yeah, I'm well, it, yeah, keep talking. Is, that's, that's always the problem. We, we all get very excited, um, and then, you know, I, you know, I'm gonna go back home, and I have a backlog of a week of work, as everybody else does, and, you know, I have all these things that have been put off, and what? Oh, right, that, that community education stuff, right, right on. I'll get to that next week. Next week and then next week, you know. So yeah, it's the keeping talking thing, yeah, which is hard. I gotta say, I think it's keeping talking, and you know, we can change our minds later. But let's just kind of agree that that that. Let's just start trying or stuff. Is without too much to meta talk. conversation, I think. Yeah. Because the more we keep talking about it, the less we do. Yeah. So the less actually happens. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. How many people are going to be at the sprint tomorrow? When is it? it? 
There's a sprint that's going on, a community sprint, all day tomorrow. It's going to be over in the Westin, and it's from 9 to 5. And it's all day long, just drop in, drop out. And basic, there's going to be a couple different things going on. Um, Drupalize me, we're going to be doing a workshop to bootstrap people for contributing to core. So that'll be, like, we'll be off in a corner doing that. And then there's the core sprint, which are, they're all working on, working on core. But then there's going to be lots of other groups that are working on whatever it is that they want to work on. So, you know, like documentation. And, like, we could have, like, a group of you get together and say, let's sit down. Let's figure out what to do with the groups page. Let's talk about how we can set up some way of communicating regularly. Let's brainstorm ideas about what we can do for next steps. Um, so that there is something to keep conversation going. So there'll be lots of different groups working on whatever they want to at the sprint. So you can just show up, um, find some like-minded folks, and, and, and help, basically, is what it's about. So I, if you're here tomorrow, I highly recommend that you go to the sprint, even if it's just for like an hour or two in the morning or something before you catch your flight. Um, it's one of the greatest community things to me um, is, is to go to sprints. So I'll put that out there. Does anybody else have any other answers? <laughs> if I put it like that, I'm not going to get anybody to stand up. <laughs> All right. Um, well, yeah, I do hope everybody comes to Sprint. Um, here's the session feedback thing. So um, I know you've seen this throughout, but if you go to the actual session page, there's a, you know, talk back to me thing. Um, but also, I'm at one son on drupal.org, in IRC, on Twitter. So if you have thoughts, you want to get in touch with me, um, either ab about the session specifically in the feedback or just generally about any of this stuff that I've been talking about, um, feel free to, to ping me and get in touch with me that way as well. So um, yeah, so that's, that's all I got. Um, so unless anybody has any other questions, we can wrap it up and get beer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Oh, and if anybody wants pink pony stickers, because if you attended this session, then you are a contributor. Um, if, you want, if you want pink pony stickers, I have them, so you can come up and get them. <laughs> do you want a blue one? I don't know. Do I have blue ones? On? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have blue ones with me.